Most of the month of December finds the Bruins on the road, including their longest trip of the year, an eight-day, 5,200-mile journey across Canada and back. For the cross-continent trip, the team has a short but important trip north for the most storied rivalry in the NHL, a Bruins versus Habs matchup with first place on the line. There's nothing like a Bruins-Canadians game, especially in Montreal. The stakes are always high and the players' intensity is through the roof. These games are just different. And even the old Warriors can feel it. As intense as this game is shaping up to be, the Bruins are keeping it loose in the room. Yeah. Brody's tough, man. Did you see his fight this year? He did, actually, yeah. He fought a tough guy. Yeah, yeah who did he fight? Carter, right? Uh, Pertuzzo. Pertuzzo? Pertuzzo didn't even play the next game because he thought Jordy might play. Yeah. <laughs> he got the Boston flu. Oh, I saw him with his pants. Oh, I think I hung up on him. But that, if they weren't so tight when you bent down, it wouldn't like... Right Everybody's there. cold on the way home. Eggie's got some extra fabric. <laughs> Big games mean that contributions must come from everyone. The first line through the Merlot line. Gregory Campbell, Daniel Paye, and Sean Thornton understand that. Come on, wait! Come on, wait! Come on, Pace! Come on, Pace! Hey! They got it! They got it! In what will be a common theme for the Bruins in December of 2013, the Bruins lose a player. That's it, JP. That's it, buddy. We got you. Never want to see that. After wishing their teammate well, the Bruins temporarily put their concern aside. Got you, Luch! Sick job, buddy. Wait till we're not out here, eh? I'm on to you. If you know Sean Thornton, you know he has a way with words. I'm way too strong for that. <laughs> I don't think you can have a handlebar mustache if you're four foot two. I don't think, I don't think it works. Get you and your turtleneck out of here. I can't believe you still can wear those. You ready for my trick play? Good start, boys. Good start. 1-0 Bruins after the first period, but in the second, the Habs storm back. Good plan, Harold. Good plan. You say the word. It's up to you. Bees find themselves down 2-1 as the third period begins. Yeah, I want some. Yeah, yeah I want some. Stay on it, stay on it here. Come on here, Luce. Go, 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 go. Great play. Oh my God. The team plays a strong third period. Unfortunately, it's not enough. And the Canadians temporarily take possession of first place in the division. December is a month to give back. That means spreading some holiday cheer at the Boys and Girls Club with a health and fitness clinic. I passed you guys out some sheets, pick them up. We're just gonna go through it really quickly. Remember this guy? Four parts to healthy living. 
With a little more refined language than the last time we saw him give a pep talk, Coach Whitesides has joined Sean and Tuca to share his expertise on wellness with the kids. So that's why a healthy diet, especially as a kid, is important for school, for sports, for being a good friend. Our athletes do this. You know, you see Sean and Tuca sitting over there. They both play for the Bruins. You had to make choices. Go down to the right. Oh. Back up. Down up. Down up. Down up. Now that everyone's stretched out, it's time to lace them up and play some hockey. How do I know who's on whose team? <laughs> I hope somebody runs Tuca. That's it, get him. Oh, nice stop. You don't want me clearing you out of here, do you? I love that he just out-muscled you in front. 2-2. Two -two. Two -two. He's finished, he can't count. Dangling at the dot. Here's Chara, the rich shot scores! 13 seconds left! Sinead Chara puts the Bruins ahead! On December 7th, the Bruins pick up a big two points at home, but at a cost. Three Bruins regulars who had their bags all packed for the upcoming road trip will now be staying behind. But reinforcements are on the way. Not very many hours of sleep. Yeah, four and a half last night. For the Providence Bruins, Ryan Spooner and Matt Fraser had just finished playing two games in two days when they received a late night call from B's assistant GM, Don Sweeney. That means one thing their services are needed with the big club. I think I was up this morning at 4 30. I picked him up at 5 20. We packed and went to the rink quick, grabbed our gear, grabbed a uh, breakfast sandwich on the way to uh, on the way to Boston and then we got on the flight and we were way too early for our seven o'clock or our nine o'clock flight. A couple of hours sleep, an early morning flight, three games in three nights. The adrenaline of being in the show will have to carry these two tonight. Obviously I'm really excited. I think you gotta take it in stride and, and make sure that you're ready to go and you play your game and with a new team you gotta you know show them what you can do and, and Kind of do it as quick as you can. Here's your keys. With the gear and rooms squared away, there's only one problem left to deal with. The emergency call-up means somebody's getting an unexpected roommate. I think I'm with uh, Smitty. Oh, really? Yeah. Smitty's probably. <laughs> yeah, he's probably a little bit pissed. What's up? Smitty. He's he's that uh, decent. <laughs> I don't like my spot today. Before every game, the Bruins have a little known tradition that helps build camaraderie and loosens them up. They play a game of two touch soccer. Oh! What are you doing? You move! <laughs> Come on, man. You gotta get that. What is two touch ah! soccer? Simple. An elimination game where each player can only touch the ball two consecutive times and the ball cannot hit the ground. That's good. I was I was waiting for it to come up high. I was waiting for it to come up high. Any guesses on who the self-proclaimed best player on the Bruins is? Best player is going to win this today. Well, I mean, other than myself, um, Dave's pretty good. Uh, Dave is very good. You know, all those Europeans are always above the rest of the Canadian guys. Uh, him and Sides are probably. The two, uh, two guys who battle below me. Smitty, we're lineys now. You're not allowed to go after me. What the f Smitty, man? You guys are brutal. Hey. Make an effort, man. Hey, go brush your teeth. <laughs> Dave, just go brush your teeth. Soup. Not the most skilled. I mean, potato kind of guy. Good effort, Soup. Maybe next time. There's an ongoing battle, me and Soup right now. Soup's actually winning 8-7 in the series. Um, you know, we have some money on the line, and, and uh, so I, gotta, I really got to up my game today and, and uh, you know, get a win. 
The inevitable disputes are resolved fairly and like men, with rock, paper, scissors, or as the Canadians call it, with a shake. Outsmarted. As the trip goes on, we'll have to see if Marshy's two-touch performance is as good as he says it is. Ah! Yeah. Have a gee. Good win, boys. That's it, boys. The bees take care of business in game one, which means a happy locker room. And a special shout out from the captain for rookie Kevin Miller's first NHL goal. Awesome, buddy. Good job, boys. Awesome. Thanks, Ron. Next stop, Calgary, Alberta, where the calendar says early December, but it sure looks and feels like deep winter. Of course, the big story here isn't the below freezing temperatures, but the return of Jerome McGinley. And as the Bruins head into the Saddle Dome for their off day practice, they're about to see just how much of an impact that Ginla had on the Calgary fans. We have talked about seven, eight minutes, so appreciate that you respect that before we get up. So. And it didn't matter what color sweater Ginla was wearing at game time. When he hit the ice, the Calgary fans showed their appreciation for their longtime captain. After a more than two minute standing ovation, it was time for the new road roommates, Riley Smith and Ryan Spooner, to try and extend the B's winning streak to three. This is going for half an hour. I was hoping he was going to kick me out if I cheated on that one. I tried to spin on it. The Warriors know that uh, you're going to tie. They can just step in and let All right. With Louis Erickson out, Smith has been promoted to play alongside Patrice Bergeron and Marshawn. Now down one zip going into the third, Bergeron offers some advice to his new line mate. You're a 20 No one's going to do it. Okay. Use up. Go, go away, Luce! Someone go in. He's that guy. He's in front! Yes! Yes! First time that movie's ever worked. Smith comes through with a big goal, and the team has won three straight. But that wasn't the end of the night's excitement. After Jerome Aguinla was awarded the night's third star, his Bruin mates refused to let him come off the ice until he took one more well-deserved spin around the arena. next stop for the banged up squad is Edmonton. To make matters more complicated for the team, they are down two more bodies as Daniel Paye and Dougie Hamilton have been sent home to Boston with injuries. And oh, there's also a flu bug going around. Landing in Edmonton, the team is greeted by temperatures colder than Calgary, but also by an old friend, Andrew Ferentz. Andrew Ferentz was an unfortunate casualty of today's salary cap NHL world. He was a warrior for the Bruins, 
and he is missed by his former teammates and Bruins fans. As the Bruins make their way to the rink in Edmonton, the good news is that Johnny Boychuk made it through his first game back from his scary injury without any issues and is ready to go again tonight in his hometown of Edmonton. All right, best players here. The bad news is that Brad Marchand's soccer game <laughs> is not improving. You guys gotta move. Who's the best player up first? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm having a really bad day today. This jerky's incredible, eh? I don't like Deferts here today. Deferts are really bad. So far on this road trip, Marcy's tallied two wins in roughly 35 games. That is not a good percentage. I was gonna win that. When the real game starts, Johnny Boychuk takes the ice tonight knowing he has a tough task ahead of him. Illness and injury have taken a toll on the team, so he's certain to see a lot of minutes. He's also certain to see a lot of his former D partner, Andrew Ferentz. Sir! Hold it! Let's go, Let's get ready here. I got, I got crew. Oh. Yeah. Bruins get off to a fast start with three goals in the first. Right, one, two, they come. First one of the line, right side, into the right circle, pulls up, center, up, and Marchand scores! He put it off the back bar and in for a shorthanded goal, and it's 3 0 Bruins. But things get tougher in the second. Everly, the quick turn in front for Perron, Perron, the left back, he scores! That was his right back in it. I didn't know either. Keep going, hey, bud. Oh, you fucked, Paul. Come on, the puck. He's offside. There's a good pull check, anyways. No, it's not. Oh. Late in the third, with the bees still up by one, an Edmonton power play puts the game on the line. What they got? They're going to end up for our goalie out in the second half, probably. Good chance. With three minutes left. Okay. Hey, with two minutes, they may go for that. So, right, got to get that puck down. Be strong, heavy sticks, everything here. The Bruins' PK unit of Bergeron, Chara, Campbell and Boychuk spend an exhausting minute and 20 seconds in their own end. Left! But Boychuk manages to clear, and the Bruins eventually kill it off. Go, 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 go. Iggy, Iggy, Iggy! Hey, hey, hey! Boychuk logs a team-high 25 minutes and 41 seconds of ice time, and the Bruins win. That makes it four in a row, three straight on the road trip. Holy sh... Thank you. Last stop, Vancouver. An opportunity for the Bruins to close out a perfect road trip, and another opportunity for Marchand to close the gap on Gregory Campbell. Of course, when you play soccer indoors, there can be some unforeseen problems. Oh, come on. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, nice. But these are the Boston Bruins, and they are resourceful. They know there's no problem that good teamwork can't solve. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, she's heavy. She comes downward dead. Yeah. Marcy is able to pick up a few wins tonight. We will have to keep an eye on his record as the season progresses. And with that, it's time to take the ice. On 
Unfortunately, the Bruins can't go unbeaten on the road trip as they lose to the Canucks. Rivalries, controversies, injuries, and illnesses have made for a memorable December. Through the adversity and the team's longest road trip of the season, contributions have come from many, and camaraderie amongst the group has been strengthened further. The road is a good place for that.